this is our advancement summary video and right here is our Boy Scout advancement status screen you get to this by going to advancement and then Boy Scout advancement clicking view on the Scout that you want to see and you'll get to this status screen here now this screen will show you the percentage is complete for each rank his completed merit badges how many he has how many partial merit badges he's working on his number of special awards number of outdoor awards and number of his Nova awards now in this video we'll be going over each one of these screens we're going to explain to you everything Troopmaster does to help you track your advancement uh, the rules in place to make sure that you don't make any mistakes that everything complies with the BSA advancement rules and what we do for you that no one else can to show you how this works I've created a new scout in my database and we're going to step into each one of the ranks and go over a few examples of the auto credit and rules checking. So this is our, our tenderfoot view and as you can see it has all of the requirements and he hasn't earned anything at this point. You can also see that he has one hour remaining for his service project. Now we have a couple of items within tenderfoot that we auto credit for you one of which is camp and pitch tent and the other is a service project so let's take a look how at how that works um, first we'd have to give our scout attendance for camping and for a service project and then it should auto credit those dates for us So I've got an activity open here. This is our activity management screen and I filtered my activities um, looking for a title of demo. I've put these in here just so I can find them easier. And let's give our new scout credit for attending this activity. Okay, so he has attended this camping activity and pitch tent and camping is both selected within our credit towards so Troop Master knows that this particular activity will count towards camping and pitch tent and let's give him credit for attending the service project as well Okay, so those have been added to the database. Let's switch back over to our status screen for our, our new scout and click on Tenderfoot now. As you can see, these states have been populated for us based on activities that he has attended. We also have a few examples of our rules checking on the Tenderfoot screen as well. If you look at requirement 6C and 6A, 6C show improvement must be at least 30 days after requirement 6A. So let's just test that out and see how that works. So let's say that he took 6A on 8-1 of 2016 and then Let's say he took show improvement today. We get a message back saying that invalid requirement dates and it says 6C show improvement must be 30 days after 6A physical fitness test. Now we can go ahead and credit this anyway if we want to ignore the rules or we can cancel and go back and fit, fix the date.
and that time it saved without any issues. You can also see when we close the tenderfoot screen, the status screen has been updated and he's now 15% complete with tenderfoot. This is our second class view, and as you can see, the software is telling you that he needs three more troop activities, two of which must be camping, and one must be pitch tent. He also needs two hours of service. switch over to activities and, and take a look. So here's a service project I've set up. It's good for two hours. And we can go ahead and mark him as attendant. If we go back and refresh this screen, you can see that a service project requirement has been fulfilled and we auto credited that for you. We can do the same for the other troop activities as well. I've got one hiking and two campings here. Let's refresh the screen, and that's been auto credited for us too. Also, the rules checking. There's there's a few examples of that as well. One of which is 7A be physically active. Now this date shouldn't be applied until after four weeks after the tenderfoot requirement. So if we come in here and put in a date of today and click save, we're going to get a message back that says 7A be physically active must be four weeks after the tenderfoot 6C show improvement. Now you can override this by clicking OK and crediting anyway or you can click cancel to go back and fix the date. The first class screen is much like our second class screen. We automatically fill in the activities requirement for you based on the activities. This would get filled in just like it did on second class, as well as a service project requirement. The uh, software also knows that these three hours cannot come from Tenderfoot or Second Class. We also monitor 8A and 8B to make sure that all the prerequisites have been met before allowing you to credit those requirements. The built-in rules checking helps ensure your data is entered correctly and accurately. The star, life, and eagle screens are very similar. Um, you can see the participation date for star has automatically been filled in for us. Uh, he's been a first class scout um, for four months as of this date. So that was filled in for us. The service project hours and position of responsibility are automatically computed from any combination of acti activity or leadership positions from a scout's history. So as soon as those requirements are fulfilled within the software, it'll auto credit those dates for you as well. You also notice 
it has a note at the bottom here. It says three of four merit badges remaining must be Eagle required. And it also tells you that the Eagle badges must come from the following list. So as we start crediting merit badges on the merit badge screen, they must come from this list and the software will place those accordingly. And we'll get into that in, in the next, um, next section of this video. This is our merit badge screen. It allows you to add or edit merit badges for your scouts. When you add a merit badge, our unique best placement algorithm ensures accuracy and allows scouts to advance as quickly as possible while following proper advancement rules. It also sorts the badges in the order they were completed and places each badge following to the correct advancement rules while ensuring badges are placed in the most beneficial location to speed rank advancement. This allows scouts to advance in the shortest time possible while still ensuring all BSA advancement rules are enforced. As you can see here in the list of badges earned, our scout has five eagle badges indicated with an asterisk under star. Now the star rank only requires four eagle badges, but this is perfectly acceptable and allows him to complete the star rank. Life will automatically adjust to look for the correct total of seven eagle badges for the completion based on BSA rules. Other systems only allow four Eagle Merit Badges for star. In this situation, they require the scout to complete an additional badge delaying his advancement towards life. Now, let's say a scout forgot to turn in a badge and let's add basketry on 4-1 of 2015. So it falls in line right here. Okay, so basketry was added. Two star and camping was moved down to life. Now let's add another badge on the same day. Let's select animation. Now, if this did the same as basketry, you would expect cycling to get moved down to life, just like camping did. But Troopmaster knows that at least four Eagle badges are required to complete star, so animation was moved down to life, even though it's no longer in chronological order. You will also notice that he has earned cycling, hiking, and swimming, all under the star rank. This is also perfectly acceptable, as the rules state that he may earn any of the eagle badges towards star and life, and it isn't until he reaches eagle that the either-or rules come into play. Let's take a look at our eagle screen. As you can see, it notates four of four of the remaining merit badges must be eagle required and come from the following list. Personal fitness, personal management, 
emergency preparedness or life-saving environmental science or sustainability. Okay, so I've went ahead and advanced our scout to life so we could take a look at his individual progress report working towards Eagle. Now, as you can see, it tells you the requirements he's completed, the requirements remaining, and it also gives you the list of merit badges that are Eagle required that he must complete as well. Now this is the same list that was on our Eagle screen earlier. This report also gives you an advancement summary and the partial merit badges that he's working on, including the requirements left for the partial merit badges that he has to complete. Now this one report will show the scout everything that he needs to do in order to complete the rank that he's working on. And this report works all the way from the scout rank all the way to Eagle. It'll show you exactly what he needs to do to finish his rank. This is our partial merit badges screen and from here you can quickly see which partial badges a scout is working on, the percentage complete of each badge. You can add new badges by selecting a badge and clicking add. We have full requirement monitoring which shows you when a badge is complete even when some requirements are optional. Let's look at uh, citizenship in the world. So here's citizenship in the world and we can see section 4 you have to do two of the following and you have sections A, B, and C. When crediting the partial requirements if you select A and B it removes C from the list um, indicating that the scout doesn't have to do that area. Let's take a look at this. Let's go to Citizenship in the World, click on the Edit button. And right now, for the open requirements, you see all the requirements listed because he hasn't started on any. So let's look. You've got 4A, 4B, and 4C1, 4C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So let's say he started on 4A and 4B, and that removes 4C from the list because our predictive technology knows that he doesn't have to do 4C as one of the requirements. Conversely, if you were to pick 4C1, it removes 4B from the list and you have 4C2, 4C3, 4C4 left that he has to complete. So here you can see he's 11% done. He's, he's finished requirements 4A and 4B. And these are the requirements left that he has to take to finish the badge. Another example of this would be uh, our animal science. The predictive algorithm automatically determines which options a scout is working towards to display the open requirements accordingly. Let's take a look at this in the animal science badge. So here's animal science. As you can see for requirement 6, it says complete one of the following options. You've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now he only has to do one of these. And our software will predict the shortest path for him to finish the merit badge based on the requirements that he has started, that he has completed. <clears throat> so 
So here I've already marked them down as started on 6A1. So you can say you can see that 6B is not in the list. Now if I remove this, and let's say he started on 6B, now 6B is in the list instead of 6A. And if you save it with no requirements selected, you'll see all the requirements available. Let's go ahead and pick a few of these requirements and let them start on 6A. And now let's go take a look at our one of our partial merit badge reports, which can be printed out and given to the scout, or he can he can come print the report himself to see exactly what he's got left to do. Let's look at partial merit badge list. Let's click on our scout. Make sure we have include open requirements selected. And generate report. And here you'll have a paper report showing exactly what he's got left to finish those badges that he's working on. Now, once he finishes this badge, you can come in here and click Badge Complete to credit that badge. You can also pick the counselor that was teaching the badge, and you can optionally type in his BSA ID number if you like. So now you'll see that it's removed from his partial badges and citizenship in the world is now under his completed badges. On our advancement status screen, we also have our special awards. Now some of these awards like the Complete Angler and the World Conservation are auto-credited for you as well. You can add awards by clicking Add, selecting the awards you want to add, and clicking Add. You can delete awards that he's earned or edit the date on the awards. We also have our National Outdoor Awards. Now most of the National Outdoor Awards are auto-credited for you. As you can see, 60% of this award has already been auto credited. I haven't entered a thing into the system. It's all been done by Troopmaster as I've entered dates for this scout. You can add additional dates here and credit the award as being complete and then click save. It'll give you a percentage of the ones that he's working on, a date for the ones that have been completed. And you can see that a lot of these requirements for these awards have already been auto credited for us. We also have the NOVA awards. You can see he's finished, designed a crunch, and he's working on Woosh. And that pretty much sums it up for our uh, advancement video.